Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game to video. Today we're taking a look at a blue, red and green or teamer colored adventures deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon featuring Beluna, Grand Squall as our commander. This 3 mana 4-4 four, four giant noble has trample and says permanent spells we cast that have an adventure cost 1 less to cast. Although we're often interested in seeking thrills first, the 5 mana instant speed adventure mills 7 cards and then we put all cards that have an adventure from among the milled cards into our hand. So on average we'll find about 2 adventure cards in this deck to put into our hand, so it provides a nice bit of card advantage. And then by deploying Baluna it also becomes easier to cast some of the adventures from exile especially. Baluna is pretty interesting when it comes to paying the commander tax, so let's say we played Baluna, our opponent removed it, then if we want to seek thrills out of the command zone it will also cost 2 more mana, so it goes up to 7, but after we seek thrills we put Baluna in exile, then it will always cost 3 mana to play, so it's not gonna have a commander tax after we use the insta speed adventure, so that's pretty convenient. Now taking a look at the rest of our deck, I've split it up into a few different categories. So for a quick overview, we've got some mana acceleration to get more mana going since we do want to cast some expensive adventures. Then we've got a few cards that are payoffs for playing adventures or that synergize with adventures in some other way. We've got a few ways to generate card advantage besides our payoffs. Then we've got some interaction and some must-haves in any team or colored brawl deck. And then we get to the biggest section, which are all the adventure creatures, but we've also got some non-creature adventures that will of course synergize with the rest of our deck. So starting out with the ramp section, we get a new addition in Utopia Sprawl, which can enchant a forest, and then we'll make an extra color after we tap that forest. So important to have enough forests in the deck. Besides all the basic forests, we also have some non-basic forests. Cards like Cinder Glade also have the forest type, so important to have enough of those to enable Utopia Sprawl. And then we've got some one mana ramp creatures with Elvish Mystic and Lenor Elves. And then Halfling also makes it easier to cast our commander while making it uncounterable. Then at two mana there's Explorer and Grow Spiral to draw and play an extra land. And then Into the North can find a snow land and put it on the battlefield tapped. That's why you see all these snow covered basics in our mana base to search up with Into the North. And then we've got some 2 mana ramp artifacts with Arcane Signet and Cold Seal Heart. Not playing the colorless ramp artifacts at 2 mana because we do have some pretty intensive color requirements with our commander. And then we've got some 3 mana ramp artifacts with Midnight Clock making blue mana and eventually refreshing our hand. And the Celestis also gives us a bit of card selection as it switches between day and night. Then Cultivate finds 2 basics, one in play, one in hand. Harrow has to sacrifice a land to find 2 basics and put them on the battlefield untapped, so we can still potentially tap them for mana in the same turn. And then Uro also has excellent synergy in this deck, as we end up milling quite a few cards with Seek Thrills, so we could randomly mill Uro and then end up escaping it, and then it can put additional lands in play, draw cards and gain life. And Primeval Titan is both a payoff card as well as more ramp, finding two lands when it enters the battlefield and whenever it attacks. So some of our utility lands include Castle Garenbrick, which can make more mana to cast some of our expensive creatures, as well as the Edgewall Inn, which can fix our colors and then can also be sacrificed to return an adventure from our graveyard to our hand. And then taking a look at some of the adventure payoffs, we've got Edgewall Innkeeper drawing a card whenever we cast a creature spell that has an adventure, as well as the Storyteller Pixie, which draws a card whenever we cast an adventure spell, so it's kind of the reverse of Edgewall Innkeeper on a 3-3 flyer. Then we've got both Lucky Clover as well as Chancellor of Tales, which can copy the adventure side of things, so we can double up on some of those effects. We've got Sentinel of Lost Lore, which can also act as Graveyard Hate, but sometimes can also send one of our adventures back into our hand, so we can redeploy the adventure side of it. And then we've got uh, Dragon's Legacy, which can deal damage to any non-commander target whenever we cast an adventure or dragon spell. And then the Extraordinary Journey can also be used as a nice mana sink to bounce a few of the opponent's creatures. And then whenever they cast one of those cards from Exile, we'll get to draw a card only once each turn. But Journey can also be played on the cheap, and then we'll draw a card whenever we cast a creature from Exile as an adventure. So that can also work out very nicely. Then the next section includes some card draw effects. We've got Once Upon a Time, can smooth out our draws, finding a land or a creature, and can be cast for free as our first spell, so it can maybe help find some of our mana creatures early on. 
Then we've got Expressive Iteration as a nice two for one. Guardian Project, drawing a card when a creature enters, similar to a Great Henge, which can also give us extra plus one counters and life gain. Then we've got Leer, which also synergizes very nicely with Adventures, which can also be replayed from the graveyard as it turns out. Escape to the Wilds is Mana Acceleration plus card advantage all in one. And the Genesis Ultimatum can put a whole bunch of stuff in play and we can always decide to keep some of the adventure creatures in hand if we want to use their adventure side of things. And then we get to some of the interaction where we've got a wash away to counter an opposing commander for one mana, a lightning bolt of course, a very efficient removal, and then a cyclonic rift and river's rebuke to bounce all the opponent's stuff back so we can set up a lethal attack hopefully, and time warp to take an extra turn, also very powerful. And then we get to the adventure cards, where we've got Elusive Otter at 1 mana. This one I'll often cast as a 1 mana prowess creature early on, especially if I can combine it with an Innkeeper or maybe something like a Guardian Project to just draw a card for 1 mana. We've got the Shield Breaker to blow up opposing artifacts, so it can also be very effective destroying opposing ramp artifacts. Picnic Ruiner is not the most exciting card, but if we can cast it for a single red with Beluna out, it can still be pretty effective. Got the Scalding Viper, bouncing something with the adventure, and then a 2-1 creature punishing the opponent for casting cheap spells. And then Bramble Familiar is often just a 2-mana ramp creature, although we can pick it up in the late game to then still use the adventure later. There's a Questing Druid, where we first want to seek the beast for 2-mana, often during the opponent's turn so we can untap with more mana and potentially play all those lands and cast those spells from exile, because it's only until our next end step, so it's not like this other impulse effects. And then whenever we cast a spell that's white, blue, black or red, we can put a plus one counter on the Druid, so of course also has great synergy throughout. There's a Frolicking Familiar, potentially dealing 1 damage to any target first, and then can pick up plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell on a 2-2 flyer. We've got the Brazen Borrower, another classic adventure creature, giving us a nice bounce effect, and then a 3-1 flyer that can only block opposing flyers. We've got Bonecrusher Giant, dealing 2 damage with Stomp, and then a nice 4-3 creature afterwards. Can potentially cast it for 2 mana with a Baluna in play, so that discount can also come in handy. Two-handed axe can be an instant speed trick, giving one of our creatures double strike until end of turn, and then the equipment can also double a creature's power. So if we can use both in the same turn, we can potentially set up a one-hit KO. We've got a Lovestruck Beast, making a 1-1 human, and then a 5-5 creature afterwards. And then Acolyte, another ramp creature. Especially nice if we can use the seasonal ritual with some of our adventure payoffs in play to essentially draw a card for free. And then we continue with a young red dragon and a grabby giant making a treasure token with her two mana adventures, and then some decent creatures afterwards. We've got a monster manual potentially finding some creatures in the top five, and then we can put them in play with the two mana ability. We've got Tempest Heart giving us some card selection with the adventure, and then a three four creature that can grow over time. Got the Illithid Harvester, which is actually pretty effective at tapping a whole bunch of creatures down and then potentially converting them into 2-2 horror creatures, so it can also be very effective against opposing commanders. Two-Headed Hunter, another double strike adventure for two mana, and then a 5-4 mana afterwards. Virtue of Courage, similar to Stomp, the enchantment side of things not too exciting, but just having a two mana instant speed adventure to deal two damage is good enough. Beanstalk Worm can also help us ramp with plant beans for 2 mana, and then a 5-4 reach afterwards. We've got the Lock Whale, giving us a 2 mana removal spell potentially, and then a 6-6 six, six flash award 2 afterwards, even though it does come into play tapped, so it's not going to set up an ambush. We've got the Hearth Elemental, which can be cast for pretty cheap if our graveyard's full, and then we can also use the Adventure, hopefully when we're empty-handed, to discard our hand and then draw 2. Stormkeld Vanguard can bear down opposing artifacts or enchantments for 2 mana, and then a 6-7 creature with a bit of built innovation, and then the Sword Coast Serpent gives us a 2 mana bounce effect for opposing creatures, and then a 6-6 that can potentially become unblockable if we've cast a non-creature spell this turn, and finally Beanstalk Giant, another 3 mana ramp card thanks to Fertile Footsteps, and then Power and Toughness equal to the number of lands we control. So some of the adventure cards aren't super powerful, but that's of course the cost of playing Baluna as your commander. You do want to include enough adventure cards to make the deck function. And then our mana base has a lot of mana fixing, a lot of forests as well to enable Utopia Sprawl. And then we covered some of the utility lands that we might get with Primeval Titan. 
Now we could also consider playing some of the new creature lands from Wilds of Eldraine, which can be quite nice, especially when searched up with Primeval Titan. But since we're playing an adventure deck, we have so many ways to spend our mana between casting the adventure side of things and then the creature afterwards. We've got a commander that can provide more card advantage, so we're typically not struggling to use up all our mana, and then having a few too many lands coming into play tapped can be a liability, so I decided not to include any. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and we're somehow up against a Ragavan. Not sure what we've done to deserve this. Our hand is fine, but not great against Ragavan. Probably need to find one of our cheaper removal spells. Okay, turn on Elves, I guess, is fine. Opponent plays Ragavan, and then... Yeah, we're still not really making much progress. This sadly enters tapped, so I cannot keep up Wash Away with it. So, yeah, maybe I do just play a tapped Falls. And then next turn play Elves as a blocker for Ragavan, which is unlikely to work. But the next turn we can play Baluna as a decent blocker. Okay, Phoenix, so we'll trade here. And then, yeah, gotta get Baluna down. And then next turn maybe play Grabby Giant, keep up Wash Away. Opponent with a Fury, which conveniently deals 4 damage to a creature. Okay. Escape's gonna be nice once we get to it. So maybe we uh, plan to use the Adventure to make a treasure. And then keep up either Wash Away or Serpent to bounce. And then with the treasure we'll be able to cast Escape to the Wilds. Could also make a treasure and cast a 3 mana Wash Away. Fixing for double blue. But that's not ideal. Okay. So we'll Wash Away Ragavan. And make a treasure. Midnight Clock the draw. So I could play Midnight Clock and then wait an extra turn on Escape. The more mana we have with Escape, the better. So that may be worth it. And then I can maybe bounce a creature with our Serpent. Opponent plays Ragavan for 5. Problem now is if I bounce it, they can replay it for 1 mana or dash it. So I think I just end up bouncing the Phoenix. Cultivate can build up my mana even more, and then I could play a Grabby Giant as a potential blocker using my treasure, and then turn after escape. Sure. So we'll get some uh, blue mana for sure, and a forest. Okay. Hopefully our opponent doesn't have an answer to the Grabby Giants, although wouldn't be too surprised. Opponent's got a bunch of cards left in hand. And there's a Mana Gorger. And a Torbrain. That's a good one. Yeah, I'll trade. Okay. Journey isn't bad. Can bounce Torbrain and Phoenix and potentially draw us a few more cards. I keep postponing this escape, but yeah, again, the longer we wait, the better. And then next turn, escape. Hopefully play another creature afterwards. Opponent should play Torbrain now, so we don't draw a second card of Journey since it's limited to once per turn. Okay, Utopia Sprawl is useful, so we can enchant our forest, so it kind of pays for itself, and we can fix for red. Alright, could also Time Warp here, 
and then still cast an iteration. Although if I can wait another turn on Time Warp, it's maybe better. So we'll escape. Ooh, Primeval Titan is going to be great if we can get to it and should be able to next turn. And then for now, can play two lanes, can still cast Iteration or play Familiar, which is probably fine. So let's do that. And then can play Primeval Titan and Great Henge, also get to draw of Journey. So yeah, we're kind of going off. Although with the Torbrand in play, we cannot feel too safe. A Legion War Boss is a good one. And a Phoenix of Ash. So I think I take it, just have to do the math that we're not dead. Because these all deal 2 extra damage. So that's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Even with a Lightning Bolt I'm still fine. And the one extra mana could matter. So I can play Primeval Titan. Great Henge doesn't quite pay for itself. Would be nice to get it down. But I definitely have to time warp here. See if we maybe draw an untapped land. And then get a Castle Garenbrig, plus a land that maybe always enters tapped. Found an untapped land. So now I should be able to play Great Henge and then still play Time Warp afterwards. So three mana, two left, and then yeah, Familiar taps for one as well. So let's just tap manually here because I don't trust the auto tapper. Take an extra turn with the Primeval Titan in play. Okay, so still facing Torbrain at 8 life, so can't feel too comfortable. But let's see here. So if I play Lozan, that can maybe mow down some of the opponent's creatures if we cast an adventure. And with a Harvester, we can uh, lock down some of the opponent's creatures. So I think that's going to be the sequence. Start with Lozan. Might have wanted to use Castle Garenbrig in the meantime. But uh, yeah, let's use Harvester. Can use a sorcery for X equals 2, which is not enough to kill Torbrain with Lozan. Tap Phoenix of Ash and Mana Gorger Phoenix. Torbrain down. Those stay tapped. And then what's next? Maybe time to play Beluna. Primeval Titan can attack. Midnight Clock is also close to transforming. So let's just play Beluna. Draw with Henge. And then if I play Celestus, I should still be okay to attack with Primeval Titan at 10 life with two blockers. And get a couple more lands that always enter tapped. I think we've got most of them, so I'll just get a shock land now. Okay. Cross our fingers. Ragavan is 7 mana, so they're pretty far away from casting it. And Lozan can mow down a few more creatures next turn. We already have the Adjual in on the battlefield, can also maybe get back an adventure at some point. Warcrafting kills Lozan, that's a setback. And a play with fire is what they found. Phoenix, another flying haste creature. Play with fire goes upstairs.
and we'll block a Legion War Boss. The 1 1 tokens reconsidering here. And then we still have two damage marked on Beluna because of the Fury here. So that's a strange card. Uro was an awesome pickup, can gain us a bunch more life. And then if we play the Illithid Harvester when it enters, turn any number of tapped non token creatures into 2 2 horrors so that can take away the flying on all the finishes so that seems nice but yeah let's start with uro gain some of that life back also very nice with a great henge so we'll escape I'll leave some of those five mana sorceries in the graveyard in case we find Leer. Okay, so Harvester to transform the opponent's tapped creatures seems important. And what's next? Maybe Expressive Iteration. Midnight Clock will let us uh, draw a fresh hand soon, so probably want to empty my hand as much as possible. Find Innkeeper, Pixie. Both are nice. So play Innkeeper. Play Pixie. can still use our burn spells, but now with a two-handed axe we might be able to just close out the game, give this double strike, I guess it's two mana to play and then another two to equip, so we might be a little bit short. I have four mana left. If we just give this double strike, that's 12 plus another five, 17, yeah we might get there. Since they both trample and, and can deal two more damage to their face. Get a couple more lands. And yeah, our uh, Midnight Clock was about to draw us seven brand new cards. Calling Viper, also nice. Well, this game was incredibly close. But Primeval Titan plus Great Henge was kind of the turning point, combined with a Time Warp to stabilize. And there we have it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Rasakath the Foul Blooded. And our hand is decent. Not amazing, but we've got a little bit of mana acceleration, some value creatures. Could play a turn one Elusive Otter, could just fetch with Fabled Passage, turn to Familiar and be guaranteed an untapped land on three, which I think I prefer. And then fetch either basic could work here. Get a mountain. And then next turn we can decide if we want to play Beluna as a creature or take a different approach. Oversold Cemetery, new addition from the Enchanted Tales. So yeah, going with Beluna. I can still play a one mana questing druid, although I kind of need to use this as an adventure first since we don't have a lot of card draw in hand at the moment. So maybe I just cast Elusive Altar for one and Acolyte as another mana creature. And then next turn we'll use Seek Thrills to find more action. A Woe Strider, okay. So I can Seek Thrills right now and then still maybe do something afterwards. Although I'll only have one mana left, most of my adventures are at least two mana. But I guess it does bump the Otter to attack for two. Could also attack with another creature here. So let's try this. A 
Thank you. Found a couple adventures. Hit for four. And we can answer a voice strider potentially. Ooh, Phyrexian Obliterator. That one's somewhat difficult for us to get past. Need to try and bounce it or fly over it. The Elusive Otter, unlikely to grow up to a 6-6 six, six or bigger. So what's the plan? Can play Beluna, could use a Monster Manual Adventure to try and find some more creatures, or maybe Seek the Beast. It's probably a fine starting point. And then I want to use this during the opponent's turn, leaving me with 5 mana, which I guess is enough to play Baluna. And then still maybe take out Woestrider. Before they untap, I maybe sacrifice it to Phyrexian Tower. Eldest Reborn, we don't really mind. May as well see what we find. But I imagine the altar is gone. Uro is not bad. So play Uro, see what we pick up. Could have played the Questing Druid first to get a counter, I'll play it now. And then I can still play the Edge Wall in, which can maybe get back an adventure later. This is a sorcery, so we'd have to use it now. Yeah, sure. Milled some good ones. How about Vanguard to destroy either Eldest Reborn or Cemetery? And then if they make me discard, I can ditch a Sheevan Reef if I'd like. Twelve cards in Graveyard, so plenty to escape an Uro. Okay, couple zombies from our opponents. And then step one, escape Uro. And get rid of some cards we're not gonna need. Could have also exalted all my creatures that they might get back with Aldous Reborn. But I imagine just destroying it is gonna be easier. Might have wanted to leave a forest untapped in case we drew Utopia Sprawl, but that's fine. So instead, destroy Ulsterborn. And then... Still have three mana left, so could play a Monster Manual. We might get to a point where we actually attack into Phyrexian Obliterator, planning to sacrifice a bunch of our permanents. Phyrexian Arena gives the opponent more card draw. Could also pick up the Familiar again to use its adventure, but it's not going to find a great answer to the Obliterator, since it goes straight onto the battlefield. So yeah, maybe just increase our permanent counts. Kuro could attack into the Obliterator. They might trade for Hobbling Zombie. And that's fine. Could play Virtue of Courage as something I don't mind sacrificing. Alright, 
traits for hobbling zombie. So we just get to escape Uro once again. Opponent also draws with Midnight Reaper. Still a chance we can replay Time Warp if we find Leer. And then just play a Lovestruck Beast, I think. Now we can also use our two-headed hunter to give double strike. So maybe next turn I go for an all-out attack. Solemn is acceptable. So they're still pretty far from enabling the oversold cemetery. And the cyclonic rift. Well, that's gonna solve our problem. Just overload it and that should be game. They could sacrifice Simulacrum to the Phyrexian Tower, draw an extra card with Reaper, and draw an extra card with Solemn. And try and find some instant speed removal, I guess. Still have our instant speed double strike. But on the board, I think we have more than enough, and our opponent explodes. Yeah, just build up a big board and wait for one of those big sweepers. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Mr. Orfeo. And uh, our hand's lacking some early ramp, so I'm gonna have to ship this back. This is better. Can maybe blow up an opposing artifact. Even the same turn we play Celestus. And against a deck that could be packing some removal, I probably want to hang on to the adventure instead of playing the creature right away. This can name blue perhaps, and we'll destroy that juicy arcane signet. And next turn, the Celestus would set up our five mana on the following turn. Okay, Stormseeker gets in for three. Pretty good with Orfeo. But now we get to curve out quite nicely with Celestus plus Elvish Mystic. Okay. Eventually we can send the opponent's team packing with a overloaded Cyclonic Rift. But we're not quite there yet. And there's Orfeo. With haste. So that deals a lot of damage. Not quite enough where I want a chum block. But if I can play Bone Crusher, that can maybe block uh, Mr. Urfio. Cultivate now, also quite tempting. Could also play Beluna for 3 mana, still play a 2 mana Bone Crusher afterwards. I think we just cultivate. And then I could play 2 mana Shield Breaker just as a chum blocker here. And take it from there. Oof. This one's pretty good. Yeah, I think we're just dead now. 16 power with Trample. GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Thalia and the Gidrog monster. What do we think of our hands? Can I turn to explore? How good is Elusive Ultra in this matchup? River's Rebuke, once we get to 6 mana is okay. I think I'm looking for a bit more mana acceleration early. And this could work, even though we don't have green mana turn 1. Turn 2 could either Halfling or Mystic. Halfling is going to set up an uncounterable Baluna. Mystic makes it easier to maybe double spell next turn, can iteration and still maybe play Halfling. 
and then try and get to Primeval Titan as quickly as possible. Jolrael we can take out with our Embereth Blaze, and Spire Bluff still enters untapped. So this turn is kind of tricky since I kind of want to play Spire Bluff this turn, but if we exile our land with iteration we're kind of forced to play it. So maybe I don't iteration yet and instead just go land Halfling and then play Beluna or take out Jolrael. How much do we care about this early on in the game? Not all that much. So maybe Beluna is fine. Upside of casting iteration and maybe putting a land in hand is that I could be more likely to cast Primeval Titan next turn. But the longer I wait on iteration, the more spells I can keep with it. Augur triggers Jolrael, makes a 2-2. And our opponent can dig up a land. Alright. Found a land, but it's tapped, unfortunately, so time to iterate. And then a lucky clover is always nice. So clover in hand. And then play the coast. And we can go clover plus take out two of the opponent's creatures now with Virtue of Courage. Don't have to do it now, but taking out Jolrol in a 2-2 seems decent. I guess we can wait and maybe take out Thali and the Gidrog monster instead. Alright. That works. They get to play an extra land. And attack. Right, let's see if we can take out Thalia. Unlikely to cast Virtue of Courage since we don't have a lot of other burn spells to synergize with it. But that's okay. Time to Primeval Titan. Don't have a lot of utility lanes to get, but Castle Garenbrig is one of them. And then probably one of the tapped lands. And hit for four. Okay. Putin can replay Thalia and the Gidrog. Just gonna send everything packing with the River's Rebuke here, I think. Could also use the Adventure, tapping a bunch of creatures. Yeah, let's just rebuke. And that's enough for a concession. Could have also just played the Harvester as a 4-mana creature here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Nahiri, Forged in Fury, an equipment deck. Our hand is keepable. Got a bit of interaction for early creatures. Iteration can dig towards an extra land. And we've got uh, Celestus for ramp. Turn 1, Companion. Our opponent's just going to be playing as many cheap equipment as possible to get Nahiri down. And at 4 toughness, we cannot stomp it. But can maybe use our Illithid Harvester for interaction. And now stomping the Companion looks a bit better. Wanted to wait on iteration anyway, so I could play a land from exile. So, yeah, we'll uh, maybe stomp Companion now before they can maybe play another pump spell next turn. Although they could have a protection spell for single white. Source to Plowshares is their own creature, so we fizzle the Bone Crusher. Don't really mind. I guess Sentinel could have maybe gotten it back to deal two more damage, but that's fine. Next up, Sword of the Realms. The main thing we want to avoid is a Nahiri with an equipped creature in play to immediately trigger Nahiri's ability. And uh, we'll just ramp with the Celestis now. The longer we wait on Expressive Iteration or Escape to the Wilds, the better. And we get to Undraw and Discard. Genesis Ultimatum could be quite promising. So maybe I ditch Sentinel. 
and then now we can go digging with iteration and still maybe play Cold Steel Heart. Okay, um, could use the Viper to bounce something. Or I can just keep all the lands, which I kind of like. So, Forest to hand. Steam Vents in Exile. Can play that tapped. And Cold Steel on blue, maybe, since we need triple blue. So next turn I could already cast Ultimatum. Probably don't need an Into the North. Ultimatum, not going to be super amazing every time. But at the very least it's going to help us ramp by putting more lands on the battlefield. And then Escape to the Wilds is going to be even better. Yeah, that works. Three lands, two creatures that make more mana. And then now we still have our Escape. As well as our Seek Thrills to provide card advantage. Opponent stuck on three lands in the meantime, even though they can play a three mana Nahiri. Okay, start with an escape. Can play a couple of those lands for sure. Maybe a beast. So let's adventure. Question is whether we want to adventure Beluna or just cast it as a creature to apply a bit more pressure here. I think I still want the adventure for extra cards. Because we don't have all that many exciting cards in hand. So we can harrow, get more basics. And then let's say we play Rhymewood Falls. Play the beasts and the Lenor Elves, and then we can attack. Our opponent's gonna maybe try to play Nahiri and equip it with Sword of the Realms. Depopulate. Bit unexpected here, but that's fine. So, play land from exile while we can, and then we'll adventure Beluna. So glad I held on to it. Only find a Brazen Borrower. Could have been better. Play Beluna. Can explore. And then... Utopia Sprawl still has an untapped forest to enchant. Could also play Harvester at some point, but uh, kind of waiting for our opponent to present a creature we can take out. So for now, maybe pass a turn or I can play a Frolicking Familiar just to start applying more pressure. And the Celestis can also help me draw and discard. So yeah, all things considered, after casting Ultimatum and uh, an escape to the wild, so we didn't end up with a ton of stuff left over. Nahiri kills familiar, that works. Do I play Brazen Borrower? No, I'll keep it as instant speed interaction. And then we can activate Celestis. Discarding a forest at the very least. Okay. Picnic Ruiner isn't bad here. Maybe it is time to play Harvester after all, since we have Brazen Borrower for more interaction. Play the Picnic Ruiner, and then we should probably take out Nahiri first. Possible our opponent's got another board wipe lined up, but then we can pick up our Beluna again and use the adventure for card advantage. I 
Mindstone and Weakstone. Luckily, cannot take out Baluna. Can take out Harvester. Sure. Activate Celestus. Can cycle Thicket. And a Great Henge was great. Ruiner gains Double Strike. And uh, end of turn, I'm probably just bouncing something random with a Brazen Borer just so I can play it and draw with a Great Henge. And then we're close to presenting Lethal. Forge and Frontier has relevant protection in this matchup, red and green. Opponent plays Nahiri. Can uh, bounce its end of turn. And play Borwer. Can make a treasure if we'd like, and then maybe sacrifice some lands next turn to go digging. Okay, so play giant, see what we draw. A land. Can uh, play a dragon, see what we draw. land. So activate the giants. And draw a card. Just looking for anything that can help close out the game because currently I have 14 damage so I'm one short. Wash away to counter Nahiri I guess is good enough insurance here that I could pass a turn. Could also activate Celestus and then still have a wash away available. Make sure I keep some blue mana untapped. Alright, so don't quite have lethal this turn, but can put the opponent to one. And then I imagine a wash away is good enough here. Brother Roads ends, dealing three, that's not enough. So that resolves. And then I hear we can counter, and our opponent has seen enough. Overall, Beluna seems like a powerful commander, but definitely not an overpowered one. If you just want to play a blue-green ramp deck, there's a couple commanders I can think of that will be more powerful, and that don't kind of pigeonhole you into playing some of the weaker adventure creatures. So if you just want to play with adventures, then Beluna, of course, seems like a natural fit. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.